To begin, you're going to need water on parchment paper, your oil reservoir, a microfiber disc, and your tools kind of set off to the side and out of your way. Make sure that your subject you're going to sculpt on, in this case we're going to be using a base, is nice and washed. Your workspace is washed and your hands are washed, everything nice and clean. Now after you have your area prepped and you've mixed up a little batch of 50-50 ratio green stuff, you're going to want to roll that into, um, in this case, for this example, roll it into a long thin line and then place it on your subject. In this case I'm using uh, just, a, just a standard larger base and I'm going to make this extra big um, just for the details so you guys can really see it. Um, the most important thing is to lay this first strip as soon as you have that green stuff mixed because it needs to be nice and fresh so it adheres to its base, okay? And in tutorials, we're going to refer to this as anchoring, okay? And, and, and green stuff anchors best when it is fresh, when it's real sticky, okay? And you can use this, <clears throat> you can use this, uh, this method for sculpting chain directly onto legs and, and armor and stuff. Um, where you want it tightly wrapped to the subject. If you want free floating or, or hanging chain, um, you can use a lot of this same method, um, but with some extra steps, which we'll get to in another video. Anyway, you want to lay this uh, down and let it adhere. Um, you don't want to really move it around a whole, a whole lot. Let it stick for five minutes. And then once it's really good and anchored, get your flat rubber tip brush, okay? And you want to flatten it out a bit, not too much. You also want to straighten it, okay? So now once you have a nice straight line like that, and of course if this were wrapped around a leg or a piece of armor or arm or whatever this chain is going to be doing, um, you would contour it at that point to the miniature. Okay, but for our example, we're just going to do a nice, straight, simple line, okay? Chain, chain making 101. Now, for this next step, you're going to want to use one of your ballpoint pokies, okay? And you're going to want to use water and not oil. And the reason that we're going to be using the water is because we want to control the amount of oil on our subject as much as possible. And this is really important. Water uh, evaporates quickly. Um, it, it doesn't... Uh, stick and create a film to the green stuff. So with water on the tip of our pokey, we're just going to come in here and we're going to start pressing in, start just kind of mapping where we want our chain links to be. Okay. And space them out a little bit. Okay. As soon as it starts to make that clicking noise, it means it's too dry and we need to come back, get some more water. Okay. You want it to to not stick too much, especially if this were a really a really small chain that we were doing, and it were wrapped around something. Um, if it sticks to your tool in this stage, you can you, you can really easily pull it right off uh, your subject, and then. Um, have to start over. So you don't want that. You want it to, let's flip it around and start using the other the other end. Um, you want it to press and then release without pulling this off the subject. You can flip this tool around and also use it, make sure you're, you're, you've got some water and you can use it to really open up those chain links. And the reason that we left so much space in between the initial mapping of the links was so that there was room to expand them, okay? Okay. All right. Now we're looking pretty good. At this point, come in and get a little bit of water on a conical tip rubber brush, okay, just like that. And what we're going to be doing 
is we're going to be defining these links a bit. Okay, so you want to come in and press in between each little link like this and just define it so they're more circular. And you're going to find that um, you may press too much and it makes them pointy, it makes them kind of um, triangular instead. That's okay. We'll work that out in a sec. So just kind of work into the gaps. Okay, and define these rings. I'm going to come around on the other side. Forgive, forgive the view for just a second, but okay. All right, so let's get a close up of that. Okay. Now at this point, you're going to <clears throat> get some more water on the on your rubber tip brush. You can also use saliva in, in a pinch if you don't have any wire, wire <clears throat> water. Excuse me. You can just suck on the uh, on the pusher for a second and make sure you have enough. Full disclosure: if you've ever gotten a piece from me, commission work. Um, chances are there's probably some spit on there. <laughs> Don't bother cloning me. I'm not worth the worth the food bill. There you go. So the sequence is map out where you want your links. Make sure you space them so you can make them bigger in the next step. After they're bigger, define them one edge, or you can do crisscross, however you like. Sometimes the miniature that you're sculpting on has detail that's in the way, you know, structure that you can't, that impedes you from getting at a certain angle. So you just kind of have to work around that best you can. And then once you've defined the, the outside, the edges in between the links, go back and redefine the inside of the links. Okay. This way you're going to be going back and forth, making the links nice and round. Okay. <clears throat> and kind of finding a nice definition in the process. Okay, so that's nice and round, just like that. All right. Um, and now at this point, you're going to want to leave your green stuff for about, um, give or take, about 30 minutes. And this will allow the, the curing process to take this to a different hardness level that we can start defining this detail a little bit easier, okay? As we're going to be running through these tutorials, there's going to be um, stops and waits in between, okay, waiting periods uh, before we move on to the next step. So um, we're going to fast forward now to 30 minutes later, and then we'll continue with the tutorial. As this cures, make sure you keep working on it, smooth it out, make it exactly how you want. So I waited for about half an hour and I decided that I'm going to start refining this a bit more before adding the, uh, the top link. And one way to do that is um, getting your careful knife, the one you keep really nice and you keep the cap on, get a little bit of oil. Use oil in this case, uh, it's not going to matter, uh, we're going to be working on the outside and not the end. So oil is preferable, especially because a lot of these hobby knives are high carbon steel and you don't want them to rust, so use water as little as possible. Um, anyway, you get a little bit of oil and you're going to cut little triangles from between the links. And maybe you can tuck under the link like that so that you can really define those links. And if you're doing a really small chain, this might not be possible. It might not even be necessary. You may not be able to see it. But if, uh, if you're doing a large chain like this, you may as well. Another thing you can do is come up at the top and just press cut little lines to really define those links. You can cut one here a bit lower and then cut the other one a little bit staggered so that it looks like the links are kind of doing like that. And what that will do is once you, we loop the next uh, link over the top, it will actually look uh, like the links are um, 
interlocked. Anyway, keep doing that as it's curing. You'll have plenty of time. Um, at this point, I would just continue to smooth and refine these circles um, and make sure everything is really nice how I want it. Wait about, um, it depends. I would probably say another hour until this is all cured. This is why green stuff can take a long time because cure times. Um, so you want to be mixing it up what you're doing while you're waiting, working on other subjects, working on other pieces. Um, one of the biggest challenges of green stuff is working on another part of the miniature while the previous part cures and not messing them up. Right. So um, anyway, with this example, keep working on it till you really like it and um, don't move on to the next part for about an hour. This cure time is going to be a lot longer than the last one, so make sure to take your time, and as it cures, smooth everything out, make sure it's exactly how you want, and we'll add the top chain. And after waiting until the green stuff is nice and cured, test it, make sure that it's not taking any marks, so that looks good. Uh, you're going to roll out a second string green stuff. It's another reason why I like to keep the cutting surface, this cutting mat, really clean, dusted, wiped off before every project so that I can use it to roll stuff out. Now I, <clears throat> I'm going to make this line thinner than the previous one. And you'll see in a minute. If you were to make it thick, then you can't see the bottom links underneath the top links. And that's what we're going to be making right now, the top links. So um, get a little water on your fingers or lick them so that it doesn't stick to your, the green stuff doesn't stick too badly. And what you're going to want to do is lay this over, and I'll roll it out a little bit thinner. Uh, you're going to want to lay it over the bottom one. You're going to do it nice and thin and even along the entire length of the string. Okay. And you're going to get your piece. And this is freshly, freshly rolled. Again, we want to anchor this as securely as possible. So you want to make sure that this is freshly rolled out when we apply it so that it's as sticky as possible. Now once it's centered, you're going to, and this one it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of oil or you can lick your rubber brush, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, but we're going to switch around this side and just lightly affix it. Make sure it's nice and centered. Okay. Just lightly apply it like that. Not too much that it squishes it or gets fat <clears throat> and obscures the detail below. You also don't want to get it off center and get it crooked. Matter of fact, once you have it pressed down, most of the anchoring can be done if you just flip it, set it down and let gravity do it. Okay, you want to let that sit. You want to let that sit um, and and uh, adhere for you know, five minutes, two to five minutes. Okay, in the meantime, you can trim your excess here. Like that, okay. So it looks just like that, okay. And you can save the, the extra or use it for other chain or other details you'd be working on at that, at that point, but um, we're not working on anything else right now. I'll just set that to the side. I like to, sometimes I'll throw away even, even green stuff that's still useful for something if I've got a lot of clutter, just so that it's not hanging around. A lot of times if you just leave green stuff hanging around, you'll set a tool down and then that green stuff will adhere to your tool and then you got to peel it all off, um, scrape it off, and it's just annoying. It's better to have a clean workspace. You can focus better and... Um, and uh, not have to worry about clutter. So, we're just gonna let that adhere, okay? 
and while it's adhering, while it's anchoring, and you can do whatever you need to. I'm just going to round these off just so the chain link looks nice as an example. <clears throat> so that should be good enough. We'll see. So now what you're going to do is get a really fine tip. If you're going to use your your um, your careful knife here, make sure that it's got oil. As you can see, we got oil on the tip, and it doesn't matter that we're using oil now. In fact, oil is much much easier to use because it stays on the tool and on the medium on the green stuff longer, so we can work it right. And what we're going to do is press, and you can flip the knife over if your chain link like mine is big enough. You can flip it over. If your chain link is, is very, it's very small, you kind of want to use your fine tip. I'm going to press in between every one of them. Like that. And you see why we let the bottom one cure first? If we had been doing that, while this was still soft, we would be doing knife marks. And it would look sloppy. So... Sculpting in stages is a great way to avoid looking sloppy. It takes more time, but if you do it right, it's worth it. Okay. Now, it's going to end up looking like that. Not bad. Um, I like to go over it, flip it over, and do it again just so that you make sure that both sides are pressed down equally. Sorry if my knuckles get in the way. As uh, the tutorials go on, I'm sure I will change up how I'm filming and trying to find a good balance between it being able to actually sculpt and show you at the same time. So there we go. Now, once that's pressed in, it is best to let that sit for just a second, grab a soft, not a sharp, okay, chisel tool, okay. So in this case, I'm going to go with the black because the um, edge is, see how it's a bit softer, not this guy because this has sharp corners, which is good for some mediums. For this, it's not. For, for this project, it's not. Where these little corners will leave marks in the links. Don't want that. You want it to be soft and rounded. Okay, so get, get you one of those. What you're going to do is softly push the links to the side. And you'll see why in a minute. And if any of them have little flyers like that, you're going to want to smooth them off. And if we were doing this with the squared off pusher that I showed you, it would be leaving ugly marks everywhere. Be very careful. Flip it over. Do the same thing. What this is doing is it will actually um, thin the links out, straighten them, make them nice and crisp. And... It'll also make them taller, so they look like they are, it'll give the illusion that they're the same size as the link underneath. Because so what you have to remember is these links, if they're supposed to be the same size, <clears throat> but you want the detail of the lower links to still poke out, then this top link actually has to be thinner than the bottom one. Not by much, but it does. Okay. And then I'll come back and, oops, let's go to the oiled one. And just repeat the process because every time you do something to soft green stuff, it will overreact. Remember what we talked about letting it cure? It will overreact and that force will be, will radiate and, dis and distribute to more of the mass of the medium. Okay, in other words, if I push here and this green stuff is fresh, 
it can mess up this link, it can affect this link, okay? Which is why we're going to carefully do the process. And this is difficult to do while trying to get it on camera. We are going to, again, go along and thin the links. Flip it over. Do it again. And if you want to make your link your links look um, a little less symmetrical and more staggered, which is probably a good idea, you can push some of these this way, some of these this way, stagger them so that the chain looks at least a little bit twisted. <coughs> Um, you can also, when we get into building free floating or, or um, hanging chain, what we would basically do is we would peel this off once everything is cured, flip it over, and do another line of top links on top of this one. Let that cure, and then you can then you have a length of uh, green stuff to chain, um, which is good if you're going to do like a flail and the head is hanging down. If you use jeweler's chain, um, sometimes can't it doesn't quite look right. Sometimes the links, uh, because they'll still be they'll 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 be loose. Um, it can give some distracting movement to the miniature. Um, anyways, we'll get to that in a different video. But for now, just keep working these. Now, if I were going to use this length of chain, I probably would have lopped off this length because this link got a little bit bigger than it should be and it doesn't match the rest. I would probably lop it off about right there and then keep the rest of that. That looks pretty good. Especially if I were going to use this as a hanging chain, um, I would take these off may maybe right there. And then I would flip it over and I would add a, a top chain on that side. So anyway, that is, that is our chain, guys. Thanks to all the patrons uh, for supporting the video. I do really appreciate it, and hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Next week, I believe we will be doing chain on a miniature. In other words, we're going to apply it. We'll probably do it on a leg or maybe a, a pauldron, a shoulder, or something like that, so that you can get a feel of doing this process while it's fresh in your mind to a miniature. So if you have a miniature you want to throw a chain on, this would be a good opportunity. Here we go. Thanks so much, guys. Here we have a picture of the finished product. Go ahead and give this a try, guys. Uh, we are going to be using this quite a bit in our conversions. Um, it's not as complicated as it looks, and it really does add quite a bit of detail and texture to miniatures.